So from here, we're going to take a look at how we would set up um, an actual blueprint, an animation blueprint to allow for Faceware to drive the editor. Um, to start with, make sure that the live client plugins is enabled. So we can get all the, line, the, the nice functionalities that we're going to be using. And here we have a blueprint. And the blueprint is pretty empty. It just contains nothing except for the Victor head. And to f there's actually two steps to this process. And first, we want to make sure that we set up our blueprint correctly. And then we're going to set up our animation blueprint. So to start with, we're going to add a component. And we're going to add a Faceware Live component because this is where the live client gets its data from. And once you've got that, it shows up. And there's a couple of different ways to make sure that we connect to the Faceware Live server to get our data source. But here I'm just going to show you sort of the most convenient way of doing this. And that is through the configuration over here. So by default, we um, are looking for a local address and 1337 as the port. And then we also have connect and begin play. Um, for more complex setup, we can actually use custom blueprint nodes to control when we connect, how we connect, and where to connect to, and so on. But um, for this setup we have here, we're just going to stick with something simple. The other thing is we're going to pop, we're going to um, just have that in here, and then we're going to create a animation blueprint for Victor. And we'll do so by creating animation blueprint. And we call it ABP underscore Victor. And this is actually where most of the logic is going to be. And compared to using the blueprint to set the manual weight on a particular uh, morph target, the actual process of doing this inside our animation blueprint will give you a lot more control. And the first step is to create a variable. And that we're going to call this shape points. And then we're going to change the variable type to face where live data. Like so. Can we compile? And then the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to bring in our pose asset that we've been using before. But there's a little caveat here, which is by default, um, the pose asset comes in like this and it expects a custom curve to drive the entire animation. And what we're going to do is we're going to drive each individual animation separately. And we do so by right click and finding the pose blender and say convert to pose by name. And here we're able to name the specific uh, pose that we want to be driving. So let's bring up our list of poses and that's basically the names here. So the pose name, left eye blink, right eye blink, left eye wide, right eye wide, and so on. So to start with, we're going to have a blink. And we want to make sure that we get the um, the pose weight as an input so that we can drive this with our live client data points. And one of the most important step that people need to be conscientious of is the way we're going to allow these poses to blend on top of each other will, will need you to set the pose to be additively blending. So you do so by ticking the additive checkbox and hit convert to additive pose. And the base pose is reference, or you can set it to neutral as well, because a neutral we, ha we know for sure is 0, 0, 0 on all things. So we can set that to neutral. Hit save. And basically what we're going to do is here is the raw value that we're going to be using to drive our performance. And it is a structure. So it comes through as a structure. And we're using the utility function that allows us to break out the individual output of the, the data members of that structure so that we can drive the pose weight of left eye blink. 
So I'm going to find left eye blink over here. And then I'm going to add blend additive over here. So we're going to take this as an input. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to create another one and calling this right eye blink. And we're going to get another apply additive. And I'm going to put the result of that into my final animation uh, and driving this with the value right eye blink. And I'm going to go through this process and do it for every single one of them. And I'm leaving the very first one empty so that you could feed in another pose from here. For example, if you want to have your body um, animation or other kind of uh, animation logic, you will kind of put it into this input here. So I'm leaving this open just so that I can kind of hook this logic up to the rest of my animation blueprint. And I'm going to repeat this process for each of my other shapes. And to keep this video reasonably short, I'm going to come back after I have uh, done all that. So see you soon. So here I have all of the uh, ice side of things set up uh, into this block of logic and basically a additive cascade. And each of these poses are driven by an a data point from the Faceware Live Data via the Live Client plugin. And then it's fed into one of these ad apply additive nodes and that is just chained throughout. So every single pose is additively blended together. And here I have a comment box that basically says this is all the eyes and brows that you're going to be using. And to make our animation graph more manageable, I'm going to use the pose cache feature so that allows us to save the final output of these cage to say uh, I and I and browse shape cage. and this will allow us to easily reuse this later on to make our overall animation logic more manageable and I'm going to repeat this process for the mouth shapes and then I'm going to add the two of the pose caches together at the end. Um, so I will set up the mouth and then I'll come back. See you in a moment. Hello, welcome back. And here we have everything um, all connected up. And as you could probably see here, I've decided to remove my input uh, additive because actually that's not necessary now that we have using the, the shape cache towards the end. So to access a shape cache, all you have to do is just look for it from the, the created uh, data that you already have. So it will automatically recognize that, eyes and brow shape cache, and then the other, I called it mouth and jaw shapes cache. And then these are just two output poses. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to additively blend them together and then feed it into the final animation pose. So the way you can think about this is that we have a single shape point as an input and then we break out the individual data points and then use that to drive the pose weights on these pose assets that we've created uh, from before. And then we break it up into the eyes and then the jaws. And then at the end of each one of these kind of additive cascade, we put the output into a, uh, into a cache. And we do the same thing with the mouth and jaws here. And depending on your setup, you're likely going to require something much more complicated than this. But for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm just using a very simple setup with only 24 shapes. Um, and if you don't count neutral, 23. 
Before we move on to the next part, we also need to actually give it a base pose because everything that we've done here so far are additive. And you can notice that the Victor mesh doesn't actually uh, exist over here because it's kind of being scrounged out by all of the uh, additive blend poses. So we actually get, need to give it a base pose um, so that everything is applied correctly. And the way we're going to do this is by going into the Victor animation and we're going to use the create asset to make an animation of the reference pose. And then we'll just, so we're going to put in content and we're going to call it just Victor ref pose. And then here we have a reference pose, which is a single frame animation that is just the reference. And then we're going to bring that in here. And make sure that this is the first input. And we can just apply it additively like this or any other order would be just fine. Depends on your preference. Let's see, now he's back. Um, the way to think about this is you can replace the reference pose with just about anything, your motion logic, your live link input or anything like that. But this makes sure that we have a kind of default input and then additively, we are blending all of our various shapes on top of it. And now on to the last step, which is to actually drive the input. So the logic of this animation blueprint is that we have this input variable called shape points. And then we're pulling out from the shape points these floating point values and using it to drive the pose weight on these individual poses. We additively blend them all together. Um, creating caches in between to help us manage the data. And then at the end, we blend everything together to create the final animation. So we need to populate the shape point with actual input data. And the way to do that is inside of the blueprint. So let's go back to the blueprint. We assign the animation class to the skeletal mesh component. And then inside event graph, we are grabbing a reference to the skeletal mesh component and we're getting its animation instance. Or there we go. And then we also have to cast the animation. This is a step that is often missed because over here we're getting a generic type, which is the animation instance. And then we need, to, in order to access the variable, I need to tell it this is a, uh, a specific type of animation blueprint, which is ABP Victor, because other blueprints are not going to have access to the shape point variable. And then we're going to get the set shape point over here. And then we're going to connect the logic as such. And the final step is to get the actual shape point data from our face with light component. Whoops, this gives us individual shape point. I want very specific shape point. And then I fit it into there. So to recap, the entire connection logic is that every tick we are grabbing the, uh, the animation instance, which is the animation blueprint, on the skeletal mesh of Victor export. And then we're casting that to the animation blueprint type ABP Victor, which gives us access to the shape point variable. And then we are setting the shape point variable on that, um, on that animation blueprint based on the input that we're getting from the Faceware Live server. And the Live Client plugin allows you to do all of this. And now we're ready to fire up live server and to see how uh, everything fits together. Norman from Glassbox Tech here.